briefly discuss about space quantization and normal Zeeman effect. We have successfully discussed Bohr-Sommerfeld theory and the Bohr-Sommerfeld theory tells us that we need only two quantum numbers to explain the motion of electron in an atom. Now these are the principal quantum number n and the azimuthal quantum number k. Now in quantum mechanics this k that is azimuthal quantum number is replaced by L that is L equals to k minus 1. Please don't confuse k with L. k cannot have zero value okay but L can have zero value. The k is zero means that the motion of the electron is simply simple harmonic motion that is oscillating around the nucleus uh, not the revolving there is no circular orbit because the k is directly related to the azimuthal quantum number that is n of phi which is varying from 0 to 2 pi uh, uh, in a periodic periodically okay so l is 0 but k is starting from 1 2 3 so l is k minus 1 now electron motions in terms of the two quantum numbers means the motion is confined to the orbital plane that is the motion can be described with two coordinates as a r and theta or theta or phi whichever you want to tell so this suppose this is our electron an electron is revolving in this orbit this may be circular in special case otherwise it should be elliptical so it can be described in terms of the two coordinates and it is confined within a plane or it follows the two dimensional geometry now classically the orbital plane of the electron may have different orientations in space because suppose the electron is revolving in this plane electron can revolve in this plane electron can revolve in this way electron can revolve in this way so the planes are not fixed the planes are random okay but quantum mechanically this is not the case now how to find out the direction of the um, re, um, omega that is angular velocity we all know that we can find out the direction of omega or find out the direction of the angular momentum k from the uh, right uh, from the uh, right hand rule that is curl your finger towards the rotation of the electron or toward of the object the thumb will de denote the axis of the rotation or the axis of the moment uh, angular momentum so now what the, how the classical mechanics cannot describe the quantum mechanics because there are whenever the Bama series they are explaining the scientists are trying to explain the Bama series they are getting that Bama series they should consist of three lines but in reality the experiment tell us that Bama series is consist of five lines so three lines how we can get five lines so five lines we we should get more lines after confining the electronic motions or after quantizing the electronic motion so we need more quantization rule to get more spectral lines that is the logic behind Sommerfeld that according to Sommerfeld the orbital angular momentum pk of the electron in the atom cannot be oriented um, in uh, uh, in a uh, random direction it can be oriented only in some limited number of spatial directions with respect to a direction that is fixed in space so if you have you are taking this as the fixed direction and the electronic configuration or the plane of the electronic motion should be confined at some fixed direction it shouldn't be random and this is called as space quantization and the allowed orientation of pk is pk cos phi equals to mk into h cross the where phi is the angle between the vector pk and the fixed direction in space okay so suppose this is the along the fixed direction uh, uh, this is the direction where you fix uh, the direction and this is the uh, direction of the angular momentum so this is suppose pk so you take the projection of pk along this fixed direction suppose this is z so this will be pk into z and this is not random it is directing only along certain sp space uh, directed way it is not in it cannot take any random direction okay and the what will be the rule of this that quantization that is pk cos phi 
because this is the projection so if this is pk and the angle between the pk and this direction z suppose this is our fixed direction is phi so this projection will have a length of pk cos phi and it should be confined in space and the value of quantization should be mk into h cross so phi is the angle between the vector pk and the fixed direction and what is mk mk is the magnetic quantum number for the orbital motion now mk can take only values 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 plus minus k so whenever you are taking seeing this equation you have to understand this this is this is confining the space of the angular momentum that is orbital orbital or angular momentum to certain specified direction by assigning this value mk to 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 plus minus k that is certain integers values not random values okay so mk can have 2k plus 1 values also we know that pk equals to k into h cross so cos phi is mk into mk by k so the phi that is the direct angle between the fixed direction and the direction of pk that is the orbital angular momentum they are also confined the space the projection is also confined the angle is also confined so that's why this is called the space quantization and we are confining it through a new quantum number that is mk or you can write it as ml okay this is the orbital angular momentum quantum number so the this how many numbers the electrons can orient themselves it will be decided by the value of ml and ml can take values of 12 plus 1 that is plus l to minus l okay how does now the question is i told a one word that is magnetic quantum number for the orbital motion now i have a certain question that how the magnetic quantum moment of an electron come in this picture so you have to go through the dynamics of the electronic motion because electron is a charge now charge is rotating and charge is rotating in our orbit what will happen the charge whenever the charge is rotating charge is moving that is the electron is moving in an orbit it will behave as a current loop now current loop is rotating so it will behave as a magnetic shell and what will be the magnetic moment of the magnetic shell that is mu l equals to a into i that is area into current okay area of the loop suppose this is our orbiting electron so if this is our nucleus this is the electron and electron is orbiting around the nucleus so it is moving the charge is moving around the loop and so it will behave as a tiny magnet okay and the magnetic moment will be that is arising due to its angle this is the orbital motion of the electron this is mu l that is orbital magnetic moment is a into i let's find out the value of mu l so a is the area of the current loop suppose the area that is the to find out the area we need the radius of the loop so suppose the radius of the loop is a so area will be pi into a square so mu l will be pi into a square into i okay now i equals to current is charge per unit time or charge into frequency per uh, charge into nu that is frequency of revolution or we can write omega equals to 2 pi nu so nu we can write as omega by 2 pi where omega is the angular frequency so we can write as e into omega divided by 2 pi so let's find out the magnetic moment associated with the orbital rotation of the electron that is becoming that mu l equals to pi into a square that is the area of that uh, area of that uh, uh, area of revol uh, revolving the circuit of the orbit and this e into omega by 2 pi that is the current so it will become e into omega a square divided by 2 so direction of mu l what will be the direction of mu l direction of mu l is certainly if it is the right angle to the plane of the electron orbit this is the suppose this is the electron orbit and this is plane of the electron orbit and mu l will be right angle to the plane of the electron orbit and it is opposite to the direction of the uh, opposite to the direction of the pl that is magnetic if pl that is the orbital uh, angular momentum is directed upward then mu l should be directed 
downward because the electron is negative. So, direction of muel will be right angle to the plane of the electron orbit and opposite to the PL that is the angular momentum or linear angular momentum of the electron. And now what is the value of linear angular momentum? The linear ang angular momentum magnitude PL is Me that is Me is denoted for the mass of the electron into A square into omega. So, the ratio of mu L by P L that is orbital magnetic moment divided by or orbital angular momentum it should be E by twice Me and this is known as gyromagnetic ratio. So, P L as P L equals to L into H cross where L can take values 0, 1, 2, 3. So, mu L should be E by twice Me into P L or L into E H cross by twice Me or E H cross by twice Me we put this as mu B and mu B is the Bohr magneton and Bohr magneton is the basic unit of atomic magnetic moment. This the value of Bohr magneton is 9.2741 into 10 to the power minus 24 joule per tesla. Now there is a question uh, with the sci different scientists that whenever there is the Frank Hirsch experiments all the experiment they perform it through the discharge tube. Now some of the people the scientists they are performing the discharge tube uh, such a way that suppose they are taking the discharge tube and they are placing it uh, inside a magnetic field or some of the people some of the scientists are taking the discharge tube and they are taking it inside an electric field they want to study the spectrum uh, behavior of the different atoms or molecules in the presence of magnetic field in the presence of electric field such an experiment was done by scientist Zeeman in 1895 I think so, uh, so he saw that there is certain splitting of spectral lines when it is uh, placed in an external magnetic field and this splitting of spectral lines cannot be described uh, with the consistent theory that is the bohr sommerfeld theory. So the question was in scientist mind what happens if an atom are placed inside an external magnetic field. We all have seen that the at electrons have already their intrinsic magnetic moment that is mu L due to their orbital motion. So what will happen? What will be the interaction of the electrons intrinsic magnetic moment with the external magnetic field? That was a question. So let's find out its answer. So now we all know that in case of static magnetic field, the magnetic field tends to align in its direction. The magnetic will oscillate back and forth about the field direction that is and it will take the least energy position for equilibrium. Suppose this is our external magnetic field and suppose this is a tiny magnet which magnetic moment is along this direction. So whenever you are placing this in a magnetic uh, tiny magnet to an external magnetic field so it will try to align itself such that it will get a minimum energy to achieve its equilibrium position. This is true for all the static magnetic uh, magnets. So this is also another another uh, picture of that is we have a certain tiny dipole and the magnetic field of which is being applied it will exert torque it will exert torque because exactly same equal and opposite forces are apply, applied on this or are being applied on this magnet so this torque will try to rotate the magnetic field uh, rotate the magnet to orient the magnetic moment that is certainly along this direction to rotate the magnetic moment and make it aligned along this magnetic field along its own axis uh, uh, along the external magnetic field to get the minimum value of potential energy to achieve equilibrium condition now you have to understand the atomic magnet and tiny bar magnet which we already discussed that are not the same. The tiny magnet is fixed that is it is not dynamic it is not rotating but atomic magnet that is electron is continuously rotating around the nucleus or it is continuously revolving around the orbit. So what will happen in this case? We have to take this with the analogy with the motion of a spinning top and the result will be the magnetic moment vector lie actually the magnetic moment vector mu e 
will actually precise about the field direction and the angle of precision should be definite with respect to b means this is not random so how does it happen suppose b is the magnetic flux density and potential energy of the electron due to the presence of magnetic field is ub should be minus mu l dot b in case of electron since this uh, pl and b are oppositely directed uh, so mu l and pl are oppositely directed so this negative will be minus of minus mu l that will be for electron will be mu ub equals to mu l into b into cos theta now mu l has certain orientations and we will get that ub equals to that is the potential energy equals to l into mu b into b ml by l equals to ml into mu b into b this is the simple calculations and we have calculated the potential energy and the total energy we will calculate it what will be the change in the total energy before that we have to discuss about the motion of the electron whenever it is uh, being uh, apply it is externally in a external magnetic field okay so we shall discuss we shall look through the motion of the spinning top suppose this is the motion of the top and you are displacing this is suppose our gravitational field it is along this direction now the motion of the top that is whenever it is within a gravitational field it will precess around this gravitational field axis of the gravitation gravitational field because the gravitational torque mgl produces the precession the l is i into omega that is angular momentum now torque will is del l by delta t that is change of angular momentum with respect to t that is with respect to time so let's as suppose we have to make the give the similarity between the two motion suppose you have the electron and the electron is revolving around magnetic field where the electron is precising around the magnetic field why is it so suppose this is your magnetic field and this magnetic field will try to make it align itself towards to reduce the system's energy to minimum now for this purpose there will be certain torque which will be acted uh, on the electron to get uh, the va uh, its value to the minimum potential energy now there will be acting um, there will be acting a torque on the electron and with this torque is the rate of change of angular momentum with respect to time now angular momentum the magnitude is fixed that is root over l into l plus 1 h cross so what it can do to change it can only uh, change its direction to change to produce a change in angular momentum with respect to time so whenever it is producing a change uh, with respect to time the change is going to be along the direction not with the magnitude so this is precising about the orbit uh, about the z uh, axis of the external magnetic field so whenever you are applying a certain external magnetic field the electrons will be precising ar around the magnetic field making a certain fixed cone it is not random it should follow a fixed cone and which will be decided by the quantum rule of quantization or space quantization okay so let's back to our discussion which we are discussing this is the change in potential energy whenever the electron or atom is placed in an external magnetic field we are not considering the magnetic um, uh, moment of the nucleus the magnetic moment of protons the magnetic moments of neutrons okay we are only discussing about the magnetic moment of the electron because the whenever we are considering the magnetic moments of the nucleus also we will get hyperfine splitting this is the we are studying the fine structure or fine splitting of the energy levels so we are considering or we are confining our discussion to electronic motion or electronic magnetic moment on certainly orbital angular uh, ang orbital magnetic moment of the electron so the change in the potential energy due to this external magnetic field 
will be uh, the ch external uh, magnetic field is mu b will be m l into mu b into b. Now the total energy of the electron in an external magnetic field becomes that is E n l it was earlier we, this is plus this term which is which will be added the potential energy term that is m l into mu b into b. So, E n l plus uh, value of the put the value of mu b that is E b by twice m e and put uh, the values of m l into E h cross by twice m e not b, b is certainly this b and the mu b value is E h cross by twice m e. So, put the value of mu b. So, we get that the total energy E is depending on E n l and also m l. So, this is the extra quantization condition which we get after space quantization. So, E n l plus m l into h cross into omega l where omega l is omega l by um, omega l uh, we can write it as this omega l is E b divided by twice m e ok. This is denoted as omega l and nu l is the Larmor frequency which is omega l divided by 2 pi. And the frequency of precision that is the electronic motion which we are discussing that is the frequency and this frequency is known as Larmor frequency. So, here you have to understand that now the electric uh, the total energy of the electron is depending n l as well as the value of m l and m l can have 12 plus 1 different values. So, what are the consequences of this equation or taking space quantization into account? The consequence is that an electronic energy level with given values of n and l splits up into 12 plus 1 closed lying shaft cells each with slightly different energy determined by ml because ml have different different values suppose ml have values from minus l to plus l so the energy levels will be splitted with certain different amount of energy and this was described by Zeeman and the allowed rule was delta ml equals to 0 plus minus 1. Now whenever you take this uh, in terms of wave number we explain it as wave number equals to the energy difference that is the difference between the two levels that is e2 minus e1 divided by 2 pi c h cross. So, the delta e will be e n l plus m l mu v b minus e n l in n prime l prime minus plus m l prime mu v b that is this is the energy of a certain uh, certain uh, orbit a certain quantum number a principal quantum number and this is the energy for the another principal quantum number suppose this is 2p and this is 2s ok let us for example. So, for the 2p we are considering this is the total energy and for the 2s we are considering this is the total energy. Now, each 2p will divide itself we split out into different energy level. Now, what will happen this splitting of the energy levels of the 2p or 2s will depend upon the value of m l and certainly let us suppose this l equals to 2 and l equals to 1. So, for l equals to 1 we get 3 components of m l that is m l can be plus l that is 1 can be l minus 1 that is 0 or can be minus l that is minus 1. So, we get minus 1 0 plus 1 for m l equals to 2 we can get minus l to plus l values as plus 2 plus 1 0 minus 1 minus 2. So, there are 5 splitting of this look here the 1 energy level is splitted with different 5 1 2 3 4 5 energy levels in the presence of magnetic field this 1 energy level is splitted with 3 different energy levels in the presence of magnetic field. So, what will be the transitions? The allowed transition rule is delta m l equals to 0 plus minus 1. So, let us find out the plus delta m equals to plus 1, delta m equals to 0 and delta m equals to minus 1 transitions. Delta m l equals to plus 1 transition from 2 to 1, from 2 to 1 to 0 and from 0 to minus 1. Delta m l equals to 0 from 1 to 1, 0 to 0, 
minus 1 to minus 1. Delta ml equals to plus 1 is from 0 to plus 1, from minus 1 to 0 and from minus 2 to minus 1. How is it? Because delta m equals to final mf, mf minus ni that is final minus initial. So, you take do not forget to take it the final term first and initial term then next. So, suppose we are taking this minus 1 minus 2. So, minus 1 plus 2 that will give us plus 1 value. Okay. So, this so we are getting our wave number that is nu bar equals to nu naught plus E b by 4 pi m e into c into delta m l. So, this nu naught is the original value of the wave number that is unsplitted spectral line and m l is 0 or plus minus 1. The original lines now split into 3 components by the application of the magnetic field. Okay. So, what are the 3 components? Uh, one is the new one is as original that is new naught. New 2 is new naught plus this one omega L by 2 pi C and new 3 is omega naught minus omega uh, omega L new naught minus omega L by 2 pi C. So, delta M L equals to 0, delta M L equals to plus 1, delta M L equals to minus 1. These are giving the different wave, uh, wave numbers. So, this is the normal Zeeman effect. So, this splitting of spectral line was started by Dutch physicist P. Zeeman in 1896 and this is known as the normal Zeeman effect. Lorentz also developed a classical theory of the effect of which gives the same expression for the Zeeman splitting. Zeeman applied this theory to determine the sign of the electronic charge and to estimate the specific charge E by M E of the electron which agreed well with the measurement. And this splitting of the magnetic uh, spectral line into three components due to a magnetic field is as predicted by quantum theory as also by the Lorentz electron theory is known as normal Zeeman effect. This normal Zeeman effect but it's, it is not commonly observed. In the most cases the spectral line is found to be split up into more than three components under the in influence of the magnetic field and the magnetic field order is when up to several tesla or flux density the spectral lines are to be splitted to be to more number and this is known as the anomalous demand splitting this type of splitting and this cannot be explained with this ml that is the orbital magnetic moment for that explanation we have to take account the existence of the electron spin so, in the next video lecture, we will discuss about the anomalous Zeeman effect and all its consequences. Thank you.